Good morning. Today is Sunday, April 18th, 2021. The names that we have for different family relations are interesting. The origin of the word father and mother, both in English and in Hebrew, brother-in-law, that term indicates that it's a relationship that comes as a result of a legal action like a marriage. A lot of interesting terms and a lot to learn from them. And there's one term that is used in Jewish law for a relationship, and that's called tsara. A tsara, tzadi, reish, he, is, um, I guess today you'd call it a sister wife. Meaning, if a man is married to two wives, so according to biblical law, that's permitted. Of course, it's not been permitted for the last thousand years among the Jewish people, and it was never a really good idea, never really worked out very well, but it was permitted in the Torah, and the, the relationship between one wife and another, remember, of course, they're not related at all, except that they're married to the same man, but one is the tsara of the other. And of course, uh, it's not hard to think about uh, the the basis of that name because a tsara is something that is bad, something that is uh, hurtful and, and uh, irritating and upsetting. So it's kind of inevitable that there will be competition, there will be jealousy, there will be friction between these two women who are married to the same man. And so even in halakhic terminology, one wife is called the tsara of the other. Our parsha, which is the double portion of Achremos Kedoshim, but near the end of the first part of Achremos, we have a section of Arroyos, prohibited marriage relationships. What is included in the category of incest, adultery? So uh, a variety of different relationships are explicated and uh, prohibited, prohibited. And it's a very serious level of prohibition. And the Torah says as follows, among the different prohibited marriage relationships, V'isha el achosa lo sikach litzrar legalos ervasa alea b'chaya. A man who marries one woman, el achosa lo sikach, he is not allowed to marry her sister, her actual sister, litzrar, because it would cause controversy. Legalos erva soleo, it would be an erva, a prohibited sexual relationship, bilchayeha, as long as she is alive. So there are two unique features about this specific prohibition. The Torah has other prohibitions. A man is not allowed to marry his mother. A man is not allowed to marry his father's wife. A man is not allowed to marry his, uh, uh, a man is not allowed to marry a mother and uh, her daughter. Let's say Ruvain marries a, a, someone who's not related to him. Let's say her name is Sarah. And then she dies, but she leaves a daughter named Rivka. He's not allowed to marry her. He cannot marry both a mother and a daughter. But there are two unique features on about the prohibition of marrying two sisters that do not exist for any other of the prohibited relationships in this passage. One of them is, the Torah gives us a reason. The Torah says, don't marry a woman and her sister. A man should not marry a woman and her sister. Litzrar, because they will be a tsara to each other. They will cause arguing and competition and rivalry between the two of them. For no other of the prohibited relations is any kind of rationale or reason given. That's number one. And number two, this is the only prohibited relationship that depends on both of them being alive. All of the other prohibitions are 
forever. If Reuven, let's say, marries a woman named Sarah, then forever, whether he divorces Sarah, whether Sarah dies, he is not allowed to marry Sarah's daughter. doesn't matter if Sarah is still alive. It creates a relationship that's considered uh, uh, whatever the pro problem is for these relationships, there's too close a relationship or whatever God has in mind with these um, extended incest prohibitions. So it doesn't matter whether the first one is alive or not. Only in the case of sisters does it matter. And if the first one dies, the man is allowed to marry the second sister. So the Ramban, Nachmanides says, in commenting on the fact that most of the relations that are prohibited in our parsha do not state any reason for it, the Ramban explains, because sisters are supposed to love each other. Sisters are supposed to have a bond with each other. To put two sisters who should have a positive, close, loving relationship and to put them in a situation where by being married to one man, they will come to controversy and they will come to rivalry and they will come to competition. They'll come to a hostile relationship. That's not right, says the Ramban, and that is prohibited. The Ramban continues and explains this is the reason for the second part as well. Because this prohibition of sisters is something that is not in the regular category of prohibited relationships. It is rather in order to prevent social harm. It's in order to prevent dis uh, disruption within a family. Because if you do something, marry two sisters, that aggravates rivalry within a family, that is a serious sin. And that's the reason that it only applies while both, while both of them are alive. If one of them is no longer alive, then there can be no rivalry. If they divorce, if a man marries a woman and they divorce, but that woman remains alive, and then the man marries her sister, well, that also could lead to tremendous upset and jealousy and rivalry and still be prohibited. But once one of the sisters is no longer alive, then the reason for this prohibition does not apply. And that's why uniquely among all these prohibitions, the prohibition will not apply if one of them passes away. Unlike the others. Says Rabbi Yisachar Friend, we learn two tremendously important lessons from this Ramban, and this is applicable to every single one of us, even if we are not considering having more than one wife. And it goes like this. The category of prohibited relations is in a category that we refer to as arroyos. That's the halakhic term. Now, we have a principle in Jewish law that in a case of need, all the laws of, set, of the Torah are set aside in order to preserve life and health. We've been talking about this for over a year now. All the laws of the Torah are set aside to preserve life and health, except for three. Murder. I'm not allowed to save my own life by murdering someone else. Idolatry, to bow down to an idol, to worship an idol. Life is not worth living under that circumstance. And adultery. But adultery is not only limited adultery, it's anything in the category of arroyos. It is these prohibitions as well. That means that the prohibition of the Torah of a man against a man marrying two sisters while both of them are still alive, either at the same time or while both of them are still alive, that is a prohibition that rises to the level of murder and idolatry and adultery. It becomes one of the three cardinal sins. 
It's one thing to say that adultery or incest is something that is just a person cannot live and is not worth living under those circumstances. But when you have a related prohibition that is not because of the relationship per se, but because it might cause strife within a family, that too rises to the same level of overcoming even life itself. We learn from here a tremendously important lesson that is relevant to every one of us of how important it is to maintain relationships that are positive or at least calm within a family especially. The Torah recognizes an action that would cause disruption within a family unit that is so seriously prohibited it is in the category of one of the three that overtake and over prioritize everything else. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two is we see from God's eyes how important it is that siblings should get along. And that means how important it is for parents to do everything in their power for siblings to get along. For sure not to show favoritism, but in the way that they act, in the way that they deal with them, in what they give them. Parents have to take every means possible to try to reduce, eliminate, or at least reduce strife among children. And the truth is, sometimes the parents themselves don't get along with children. But that's not as bad as the children fighting among themselves. Listen to this medrash. This is an incredible medrash. It refers to our Father God, but it's something that all of us can learn from. At the beginning of the Parsha of Noah, God sees that the world that he just created and human beings that he just created, it's not going the right way. And they descended, they were doing all kinds of things. They were worshiping idols. They were engaged in immorality. They were doing all kinds of things. And God says at the end of the Parsha of Bereshis, God says, I'm not happy with what's going on. It's not going the right way. But in the beginning of Parsha's Noah, the next Parsha, God says to Noah, that's it. I'm going to destroy the entire world by flood. You and your family will be saved together with the animals. Everyone else is going to be wiped out. The Medrash asks the question, what tipped the scale? We already knew from the end of the last Parsha in Bereshis that God was not happy, that the path was not going right. The Torah even says the amazing words, and it's even hard to understand what they mean. God recanted or regretted that he had created mankind, whatever that means from God's point of view. But it wasn't going well. God saw problems. What was it between God seeing problems and God deciding it's over. What was the, what was the final straw? Says the Medrash, our rabbis in the Medrash, the final straw was Hamas, violence of one person against another. And our rabbis in the Medrash say as follows. It's as if God says to mankind, listen, you don't want to serve me. You're going to serve other gods, other idols. It's the most important mitzvah in the Torah, but you're going to do that. I can live with that. But you're going to hurt each other. You're going to fight among yourselves. I can't, I can't live with that. That I can't handle. That's a line too far. Even the sins that are against God himself, as serious as they are, God can live with that. But if we, God's children, can't get along, that's when God says that's too far. Siblings themselves and parents 
need to do everything in their power to try to create the situation where their children are getting along. Even if the children are distant from the parents. That's the lesson we learn from this Parsha, where the Torah itself elevates the prohibition of being married to two sisters at the same time, which would cause sibling rivalry and competition, to the highest level of prohibition, even higher than life itself. We have to always look for ways and try again if something hasn't worked and try to be creative to make sure that we as siblings are maintaining a positive relationship and to do everything that we can that our children at least have a positive relationship with each other. That's the lesson that comes from this unique prohibition in our Parsha. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.